All right, so Democrats desperately are trying to pitch the message that they are the only vanguard standing in between whatever semblance of democracy that we have here in the United States and the authoritarian threat from the Republican Party and from Donald Trump personally. And that kind of messaging is going to get more and more difficult for people to believe as Democrats continue to straight up rig their own primary. So this is just the latest in a string of multiple different states around this country that have just chosen to have Joe Biden be the only candidate on their primary ballot. So this is in North Carolina now, right? State election officials confirmed that by the North Carolina Democratic Party's request, they are now excluding other candidates who are trying to challenge Joe Biden, like Marianne Williamson and Chank Uger and uh, uh, Dean Phillips as well. So they're just straight up not allowing them on the ballot. Now, you can read into some of their justifications here. I mean, this is just, it's laughable, right? The quote here from uh, Tommy Maddox, okay? North, Der uh, North Carolina Democratic Party spokesperson. He said, in order to get on the ballot, you need to have donors in the state and be actively campaigning in the state. Okay, so first off, when was Joe Biden campaigning in North Carolina? I mean, I, I don't remember him going and doing that. Maybe he made some appearance in North Carolina. But to have donors in the state, are you saying that neither Dean Phillips or Cenk Uger or Marianne Williamson, that they have any donors from the state of Cal uh, North Carolina? Is that what we're saying here? I mean, it's just such a ridiculous, arbitrary metric that they're putting up here. The reality of this is the Democratic Party put forward an order here from on top OK, in, you know, a couple handful of people that are running this state's Democratic Party and at the national level. And they just decided to unilaterally make a decision. Joe Biden's our guy. Fuck whatever the millions of people who would vote in this primary want or fuck their ability to even have a say in the matter. We are just going to give them one choice, one option. OK, and this is not the first state that this has happened in. This has happened in Massachusetts, it's happened in Tennessee, I believe, it happened in Florida recently, and now it's happened in North Carolina. And it's probably going to happen in other states as well. So, I mean, there's no two ways about it. It's just straight up rigging the primary for Joe Biden, an incredibly unpopular candidate that we're going to get to here in a minute in terms of some of the latest polling on that. And it's, it's also incredibly ironic that they're running this entire campaign trying to make you know, the battle against this authoritarian fascist threat, which I actually agree, the Republican Party, Donald Trump, they are an authoritarian threat to the country, for sure. But if that's going to be your central messaging, how are you then going to forcefully and undemocratically prop up somebody like Joe Biden, who even a majority of Democrats don't want to run again? We saw polls from months ago, back when Joe Biden could have made the decision not to run again, saying that over, it was like 70% of Democrats wanted somebody else to lead the ticket. And the Democratic Party, the establishment of the Democratic Party, is shutting all of that down and saying, no, you don't even get to have a say. You don't get a choice in the matter. And I think that that's because at the end of the day, they see a lot of Joe Biden's glaring weaknesses, right? And so we had a couple of responses here. First from Marianne Williamson, right? And this is in response to this just amazing quote, right? Biden-Harris campaign man manager said, our message is clear, and it is simple. We are running a campaign like the fate of our democracy depends on it, because it does. And again, I don't even necessarily disagree that the fate of, you know, again, whatever semblance of democracy we pretend to have here in the United States, as corrupt and rotten as it is, I do agree that, like, the surface-level democracy that we have here, that is in jeopardy, right? That is legitimately under threat right now in 2024. But you can't run a campaign on that when, as Marianne Williamson points out here, your way of saving democracy is to circumvent democracy, is to pretend as if Joe Biden has no primary challengers and there's there's no democratic process that needs to play out within your own party. Suppressing the candidacies of your three opponents does not reflect a championship of democracy in any way, shape or form. And she's 100 percent correct on this. Right. We also had here from Dean Phillips. Right. Now, Dean Phillips has actually surprised me in a couple of different ways. He recently signed on to Medicare for All, apparently. Now, maybe he's sincere about that and he would go to the mat and fight for it. Maybe he's just doing that because he thinks it'll, you know, appeal more to a progressive audience. I don't know how, how sincere he believes in some of these things in his heart. But he's pleasantly surprised me given that my, my previous interpretation of him was that he was like a pure, you know, more corporate candidate. And so I think that he's, he's won me over on a few different issues that I've heard him uh, talk about, certainly not on something like Israel, but 
even he, you know, was making the same point as well. And I think that he also did have a, almost like an awakening when he decided to run for president and he saw how the Democratic Party will kneecap anybody who tries to challenge the establishment and whoever the preferred candidate is of the establishment. And he saw this and almost immediately, within a couple of weeks of trying to run his campaign, he came out and basically said, hey, you know what, when Bernie Sanders said and, and when people around Bernie Sanders said the primary was effectively rigged against him twice, they weren't wrong. They weren't lying. OK, this process is rigged. So I think he's, he's come to realize how corrupt the system that he was participating in has become. And he says, never imagine that Florida and North Carolina Democratic parties would use Iran's tactics to guarantee the outcome of an election. And he's pointing out here in Al Jazeera article, Iran's Guardian Council disqualifies most presidential hopefuls. And he's kind of right. OK, he's kind of right. Of course, he's using, you know, this attack on Iran to make his point. But whatever, we could put that aside. Right. I mean, this is kind of exactly what they're doing. Right. You have a tiny group of elites who are unilaterally making the decision. This is our guy. We don't approve of Marianne Williamson and her politics. We don't approve of Dean Phillips and his politics, or not even necessarily his politics, but just the fact that he would dare to question the status quo, that he would dare to approach our dear leader, Joe Biden, with a challenge, right? And so he's not approved. And Jake Uger, he's certainly not approved. And so we're just running with our guy, regardless of what anybody wants. I mean, it's, it's incredibly authoritarian. And it's everything that Democrats critique Republicans for, which is the deepest irony of all of this. And then we also had an interesting article here, just specifically on Dean Phillips, in terms of how even some of his own colleagues in Congress have been, like, snubbing him. I mean, this article has some, some insane quotes here. Dean Phillips standing on Capitol Hill has all but collapsed. <laughs> so this guy, who's not even, like, he's not Bernie Sanders, okay? He's not an outsider. This is a guy who Democrats recently just decided to put in a leadership position within their own party in Congress. And the second that he decides I'm going to run for president and challenge Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they all immediately flip on him. So look at some of the quotes from this. Quote, this is from Pete Aguilar from California, the chair of the caucus. I don't think Dean Phillips is earning any new friends in the House Democratic Caucus these days. We had one here from uh, Robert Garcia. He, he called Phillips' campaign a total joke and very disrespectful of the president and the party, saying he's torched his reputation, torched his reputation because he posed a challenge to Joe Biden. Very disrespectful to the president and the party. I mean, listen to how these people talk about Joe Biden as if he has like a 60, 70 percent approval, right? How is that disrespectful? What's disrespectful is to spit in the eyes of your own voters, your own base that is in, you know, participatory in the Democratic primary process to spit in their eyes and say, you don't even get to have a choice. This is the guy we picked. We're sticking with him. We don't care how unpopular he is. We don't care how much of a risk he poses towards the re-election of somebody like Donald Trump back into office. We don't care about any of that. It's, it's disrespectful for you to even challenge him. No, I mean, the disrespectful part is eliminating democracy in your own party process. That's the disrespectful part. I mean, another one here. This is from uh, the former House Majority Leader, Steny Hoyer. Dean Phillips is not going to win any primary. I think he's not helpful to the country. Okay, so even if you think he's not going to win the primary, which granted, I don't think he is either. I don't think Marianne Williamson's going to win. I don't think Cenk Uger's going to win. I think a large part of the reason they aren't going to win is because the Democratic Party is refusing to have debates, okay, because they know Joe Biden would not be able to do a real debate, okay, and they're also refusing to do, you know, real primary contests. They're trying to go to all of these different organizations and speaking events and, and, and colleges and whatever the case may be. And the Democratic Party is literally working behind the scenes to prevent people like Marianne Williamson and Dean Phillips from being able to even make appearances at some of these places, right? I mean, it's real, like, shady underground shit that the Democratic Party is doing here. But, I mean, again, even if you think he's not going to win the primary, then let the primary play out. I mean, in all likelihood, even if it was an open primary... Just because he is the incumbent, Joe Biden would probably still win, right? I would fight for Marianne Williamson to, to, to be the nominee, obviously. She's much more in line with my politics. But even if you think she's not going to win, she would have a low chance of winning. So then just do the primary. Have Joe Biden, if he, you think he's capable of being the president, he should be capable of going and explaining his ideas and making some sort of a pitch for 2024. He should be able to go and go to the mat and battle with Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson. He should have no issue doing that. OK, if he's as strong of a candidate as you guys suggest that he is so strong that it's disrespectful to even challenge him. Right. Then have the fucking primary and have a legitimate democratic process and let people make a decision. 
And if that happened, I think one of the main things that they're scared about the most, it's not necessarily Marianne Williamson, it's not necessarily Dean Phillips, I think it's that a lot of these Democrats and the upper echelons of the party are worried that if they did have a legitimate contest, if they did open up the primary, they had debates, everything was fair and legitimate, then maybe you would have other people enter the race as well. Some people with a lot more clout, maybe somebody like, I don't know, Gavin Newsom or Josh Shapiro or Andy Bashir or somebody like that who could legitimately, you know, bring a real challenge to Joe Biden and win at the end of the day. So I think they're afraid of all of that. They're afraid of the competition in and of itself, which is just fucking pathetic. I mean, one last one here that they point out. He seems to be taking a page out of the Trump playbook. I mean, think about that irony there. This was according to Sidney Camelager Dove, okay? It, it makes me wonder if he's a real Democrat. So if you don't bend the knee to Joe Biden, right, or whoever Democrats decide to, to pick, if you don't bend the knee to them in every way, shape, or form, then you're not, a real, you're not a real Democrat to them. I mean, come on, man. He takes a page out of the Trump playbook. No, it's actually you guys who are taking a page out of the Trump playbook by using authoritarian tactics within your own party to rig the election. You know, I mean, that's something that Donald Trump accused Democrats of doing in 2020, wrongfully so, because the election wasn't rigged in 2020 and Joe Biden did win that election. But this is exactly what Donald Trump was accusing Joe Biden and Democrats of doing back in 2020 in the general election. And now they actually are doing it in their own primary for the 2024 election. You guys are taking a page out of the authoritarian playbook here, out of the Trump playbook. I mean, it is just so absurd at any level that you want to look at it. And again, it would be one thing, right? It would almost be semi-understandable if you had a wildly popular incumbent, they're sitting at 65, 70% approval rating, you know, everybody loves them, they're incredibly accomplished, they have a solid policy platform for the next election, they're up in the polls, they're having a strong candidacy, you know, people, you know, whatever. That would be one thing. That is not the situation that we have right now. Not only is Joe Biden a weak candidate, he is in a position now where his polling data has dropped so low, his approval rating has dropped so low, that basically no president in the modern history of the United States of America has ever won re-election with as low polling numbers as Joe Biden has right now. Okay? It's never happened. It's never happened. He has historically low approval ratings right now. And he's dropping off a cliff with some of the key constituencies that are supposed to make up the winning coalition for him. I mean, these are just some of the recent ones. This is from a couple months ago, but I talked about this at the time. It's roughly still the same right now. Trump leads in five critical states as voters blast Biden. Okay, five critical battleground states. All right, another one here. This came out recently. I mentioned it the other day. Trump's support from Hispanic and youth voters grows over Biden. Trump is now beating Joe Biden with young voters and Hispanics and his support from black people are, are, is, is dropping off of a cliff right now. Can you imagine the Democratic candidate who's supposed to be the more energetic lefty populist candidate right, in theory, is losing the young vote. Young people are overwhelmingly more left-wing than any other generation by a mile, and he's losing to Donald Trump. And it's not because Donald Trump's popularity is skyrocketing, it's the opposite. It's because Joe Biden's popularity is falling off of a cliff, okay, specifically with his handling of Gaza, you know, enabling a genocide, not really going to be too appealing to a lot of young people right now, but also his failures on student debt, you know, his failures on a, a whole host of other promises that he made back in 2020. I mean, there's so many different things that go into this, but this is the reality of where Joe Biden is right now. It's not just, it's not that young people are flocking over to Donald Trump necessarily. It's that a lot of them are probably going to stay home or a lot of them might, you know, go vote for a third party. Maybe they'll vote for RFK Jr. Maybe they'll vote for, you know, Cornell West. Not that RFK Jr. is better on Israel. In fact, he's actually worse on Israel than basically anybody in the election. But, you know, people are going to go and, and do their own thing if, if you aren't going to step down or if you wouldn't radically change the status quo. And Joe Biden and the people around him just refuse to believe that. They're actually running with a strategy right now of basically just, we're not Donald Trump, okay? Trump is an authoritarian threat to the country, so you have to vote for us. He's a threat to abortion rights, so you have to vote for us. It's all negative campaigning. And I don't mean negative in the sense that they're being mean or unfair to Republicans. You should demonize Republican policies, of course. But I'm talking about negative campaigning in the sense that what is Joe Biden even running on for 2024? I was thinking about this yesterday. I can't even think of a single, you know, verifiable, concrete policy proposal 
that Joe Biden has said, if I'm elected in 2024, and if you give Dem Democrats the Senate and the House, here is XYZ policy that I promise you we will get passed. Or here is XYZ executive order that I promise you that I will do. I have not seen a single one of those over the last number of months since he's announced his re-election. He's just like, I guess, planning on being a lame duck president for his second term. And in all likelihood, he wouldn't win the Senate because this isn't this isn't a popular guy who's going to rally the base to go flock to Democrats at the polls. If anything, he's dragging down the entire party by being at the top of the ticket. I mean, it's just a fucking embarrassment, man. Losing the youth vote to Donald Trump. I mean, Jesus Christ. And then, of course, I'm going to finish off with this, which has been floating around for a while now. Here's uh, Steve Kornacki, right, the polling guru over at MSNBC. So even on MSNBC, they're recognizing how disastrous the current situation is. Let's go ahead and watch this a little bit. He's poised to be the Democratic nominee. What kind of year has he had politically? Well, again, he started 2023 coming off those good midterms for Democrats, and his approval rating, you know, 46, 50, wasn't that bad, but it's taken a hit this year. And as we start to close out the year, our final NBC poll had him at just 40% approval, 57% disapproval. How does this compare? And I've seen other polls that go as low as like 36, 37, 38% on the approval to past presidents entering the re-election year. Here you can see it. Here's the 40 that we have Biden at right now. These are all the final polls heading into the election year, re-election year that NBC... I mean, look at that, right? Donald Trump, okay, he had a 44% approval rating. He lost, all right? Another one that lost, George H.W. Bush, had a 52% approval rating, a majority approval rating with only 41% disapproving. He lost. Bill Clinton, he won. George W. Bush won. They both had 51% approval, a full 11 points ahead of Joe Biden. Obama, he won re-election, and he had a 46, six points ahead of Joe Biden. So nobody in recent history with this low of an approval rating has ever won re-election. It's never happened. He conducted, you just see all the recent presidents. Look, Trump got beat in 2020. He was at 44 heading into his re-election year. Bush Sr. got beat in 92. He was at 52 and heading south rapidly uh, there. But you see how that number compares. That's the lowest. That's the lowest in an NBC poll for an incumbent facing a re-election year. But it is a tight race when you poll Biden versus Trump at the start of the year in the average of the polls nationally. Biden had a two-point advantage. Now, at the end of the year, it is Trump who, on average, has a two-point advantage. Advantage here. It's a very, very close race, obviously. Uh, and what are the concerns of voters? The dynamics we'll be talking about. Uh and, and going back to what he was just mentioning there, right? If you look at the polls with Donald Trump, granted, it is still pretty close. I think the idea that it's even a 50-50 split right now is completely insane, given Donald Trump's track record. I mean, the guy has over 90 criminal charges that he's facing right now, okay? There, there's a possibility this man could literally be in jail, okay? Maybe a low possibility, but a possibility he could be in jail by the time of the election. And this guy is the favorite to win in 2024 now. With the history, with the baggage, with the insane policy agenda, the people who he put in positions of power in his previous administration, his largest accomplish accomplishment was a, a tax cut for corporations and the wealthy, right? This guy is now the favorite to win in 2024. That's how abysmal Joe Biden's polling is. But it gets even worse because even if somehow Trump does get taken down, you know, by one of these, you know, various charges that he's facing right now or something else. He dies on a random Tuesday. That could always happen. They're both old as fuck. Could happen to either of them. Maybe that might even be the best case scenario is both of them, you know, solve the problem for, you know, for us. But even if you remove Trump from the picture, if Joe Biden was going up against a generic Republican and, and there's polling to back this up, or if he was going up against Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis, they would clean his clock. OK, it's not even close. Nikki Haley, in one of the recent polls I saw, was a, a ahead of Biden by like 11, 12 percentage points, 11 percentage points. So it, uh, it's not even close. The only thing that's even keeping it remotely in the field of a, a potential win for Biden is because of how unpopular Donald Trump is and because of all of that baggage, because of the criminal charges, because of January 6 and whatever, 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 and abortion rights and all of that. That's the only reason it's even remotely close. And that's basically what Democrats are hanging their hat on. They're saying that's going to win us the election. I mean, this is the risk that they're taking. Biden's age and mental fitness. I mean, this is major moderate concerns here, right? 74% say that his age and fitness is a concern. And they're not wrong. Okay, they're right. We see Joe Biden has dementia. Everybody can see that. Trump's criminal and civil trials, that's at 62%. So in other words, it looks like people are more concerned with Biden's age than they are with Trump's criminal and civil trials, 
which honestly, I kind of disagree with that. I think the criminal and civil trials should probably have more weight behind them. If you're making a decision between two people, do you want somebody who's old and semi-demented or do you want somebody who's literally a criminal? I don't know. I mean, that seems like a pretty easy choice, but regardless, this is something that is very obvious to people and it sticks in people's minds. Now, maybe this number goes up if Trump is actually convicted on one of these things, who knows? But I mean, he's still losing to this guy, right? And then you have like Biden's awareness or involvement in Hunter's business dealings. That's at 60%. Trump's age and fitness is at 47%, which is also really low for what it should be. I mean, Donald Trump is also demented and old and out of his goddamn mind and has a lot of the same gaffes that Joe Biden does. But I think Trump is just more, he has that entertainer background. And so he's better at adapting and being on his feet. And people kind of think he's just more like funny when he fucks up like that versus Joe Biden, where it's like, oh, that's, it's kind of sad watching him when he like stumbles over his words or he, you know, forgets where he is or walks the wrong way or something like that. So, I mean, th this is what Democrats are risking. What they say is probably the greatest threat in, uh, you know, modern history to American democracy. That's what they say Donald Trump is. That's what they say the Republican Party is. And I agree on that to a large extent. But why the fuck would you then turn around and risk American democracy, as you see it, on Joe Biden, one of the weakest candidates in the modern history of any president trying to run for re-election, while simultaneously doing what you accuse Republicans of doing, being authoritarian, being undemocratic in their tendencies, doing exactly what you accuse them of doing in your own primary. I mean, who are we kidding here, guys? Joe Biden is on track to lose to Donald Trump, right? That would be an absolute disaster, okay? There's some policies that there's a massive difference between them on. There's some policies that there's almost no difference on. But Donald Trump would absolutely be a disaster if he was reelected, okay? Just to the basic functioning of the country, right? And Democrats don't even want to have a conversation about potentially having somebody else lead the ticket. Even though Joe Biden, back when he ran in 2020, was basically telling everybody, I'm gonna be a one-term president, and then I'll pass the torch onto the next generation. What the fuck ever happened to that? I mean, is he is he so gone at this point that he doesn't remember saying that? Or he just, it's an ego-driven thing and he thinks he's the greatest president ever and that people just don't realize it and he's being unfairly targeted or something like that? I mean, all of this is just so ridiculous and, and Democrats need to sort their shit out and sort it out right now before it's too late because if you if you put all of your chips all of your cards behind joe biden then 2024 is going to get absolutely messy